apologies for the lack of design on the presentation, but my presentation was about the neurological effects and potential medical applications of music. So music has been a passion of mine ever since I was really young. So when I joined Polygens, I decided to combine it with another one of my passions, that being, well, neurology. So that's a bit of history as to why I'm doing this. But how about a brief history of music and music therapy, then? Music has existed for at least 40,000 years with evidence that it has for longer, being a sort of universal language, something that every culture can has in some way, shape, or form. Music therapy for medical purposes, however, was first recorded all the way down in the 1800s, pioneered by Edwin Atlee and Samuel Matthews. Music therapy continued to be explored, with several programs being created and then subsequently disbanded. And then in the 1940s, Michigan State University established it as an academic program, with other universities following suit shortly after. However, in order to fully understand how to use music for therapeutic purposes, they needed to understand how music affects the brain. So, how the brain processes music. Processing starts in the auditory nuclei, which processes all types of sound, including, for example, my voice. Emotional meaning is assigned to the sound with the primary auditory cortex and the temporal lobe, the latter of which associates the song with previous memories. So for example, if you happen to have a song that you associate with a long car ride, for instance, whenever you hear that song again, memories of that car ride will most likely come, come flooding up to you. And the eight variables in music that affect the music's mood, so to see, so to speak, are pitch, rhythm, 